Thank you, everyone. Let's talk about managing Linux network namespaces before and after Go 1.10. So really, with a quick show of hand, who here has created a Docker container without any issues? <laughs> All right, so when you create a Docker container, you're talking to a Docker container runtime, and it's written in Go. And what it's doing is it's making a bunch of syscalls, other configurations, and talking to your OS level. At least in Linux, it makes those syscalls and create a container for you. Now, Docker adopted Go for all the right reasons, but it also helped Go in a way that it promoted wide adoption of Go as a systems language. It helped fix So whoever was fixing bug in Docker, it was producing more Go programmers, like one example here. And then it also ad helped in identifying some of the system level pro problems which Go runtime had, which were related to syscalls and threads. And that's what I'm going to be talking about today. So when you create a container in, using Docker, it creates a bunch of namespaces. And one of the namespaces it creates is, is a network namespace. So the idea behind creating a network namespace is it provides an isolation for your container so that nobody can see inside that network namespace. And whatever process is running in that namespace does not know what's outside that, na that namespace. But in one of the, some of the previous versions of Docker, there was an issue where when you create a Docker container namespace, the commands you are supposed to run on the Docker daemon on your host level were actually getting executed inside the network namespace, Now, which is a very serious concern related to security also. And it led to very different consequences and bugs. So let's see in action actually what was actually happening. So we'll try to simulate this with a demo. And let me go over what all it includes. So we will run a Go process in a Linux machine what this Go process is doing is it's creating a bunch of network namespaces. Once these network namespaces are being created, we add a worker Go routine into each network namespace. And in parallel, we also create some worker Go routines into the host, host network namespace. And all these net Go routines are doing is they are just reading the interface on which network namespace they are running on. So the ones which are running in the new network namespace will only get loopback zero because we are not creating any interface there. And the Go routines which are running at the host level will be able to see all the host level interfaces. And as we keep adding more worker Go routines, Go, Go runtime will create more and more threads. But suddenly what will happen is we'll see one or two or maybe more Go routines which will just report a loopback zero and not the whole and not all host network interfaces which it, which it is supposed to see. So let's go ahead and see that. So I have a VM running here. And I'm running a Go version 1.9. I'll do a Go build for my program. Now, once I run this program, what it will do is it scanned all the host network interfaces. It created 100 network namespaces. And we can go ahead and look. These network interfaces are being created in this VM. Now. Now we can add these worker Go routines into these network namespaces and at the host level. And it will only print the ones which, will, which are running in the host network namespaces but are not able to find these all interfaces. So let's go ahead. So when we created these host network interfaces, these were the Go routines running, which were only able to find loop back zero, whereas they should be able to see whatever is running at the host level. So that's a big problem. Now let's see why this happened. As we saw in Kavya's talk on Tuesday, when a Go routine is being created, it gets associated with a thread. And, it need, and a thread runs that Go routine. Now, as more and more Go routines are being created, Go runtime scheduler adds them on multiple threads. And if we keep on adding more and more Go routines, Go runtime scheduler will create more and more threads. Now, as these new threads are being created, they inherit state from an existing thread. So same thing happened here. In our case, when these Go routines reported an error, the threads on which they were running were actually inheriting state from the threads which were running in the new network namespace. And that's why some of these Go routines were only able to see loopback zero instead of the host network interfaces. But the good news is Go 1.10 fixed this issue, which was there for a long time. Let's go ahead and try it with Go version 1.10. So I'll update my Go version. It's 1.10, and I'll do a build again for the same program. 
at this point, we should not have any network namespaces. And if I do run my program again, it does the same thing, scans for all the host level network interfaces, creates 100 network namespaces. And if we go ahead, now this time, none of the Go routines were able to see only loopback zero. They were all getting the host network interfaces, so we don't see any error. Now let's see how Go fix this issue. It's the same scheduler. Now, when the Go routine when a Go routine calls a lock OS thread, which is being provided by a runtime package, runtime scheduler makes sure that no other Go routine is being scheduled on that particular thread, as long as the lock is being held by that Go routine. In Go 1.10, there is an addition. Before a lock OS thread is, is being called, the scheduler or the runtime will make a call to a start template thread. Now, this start template thread is being called because we know at this point the thread on which is, it is being run is, an, is in a good state. So as long as the thread was in a good state, we created a template thread. And based on this template thread, now when the new thread will be spun up, these new threads will inherit state from this template thread because it was, it was in a good state. And that's how all these new Go routines, when, when, we, are, when we are creating them in the Go 1.10, are able to inherit state from this correct template thread. So same thing happened in my program. When I ran my program, it created a template thread. And the, this time, the threads which were being created at the host level were inheriting state from this template thread rather than inheriting state from the threads which were running in the new network namespaces. So in summary, if you are creating or managing Linux network namespaces using Go, please use Go 1.10 or above. Thank you. <laughs>